you know, obviously a, a credit to Temple. Um, as we expected and as we told our guys going into this game, uh, it was going to be a tough game. This is a really good football team. Um, and, and again, we want to give them all the credit. They out-executed us uh, in, in at least two phases of the game, whether it was on their offense making some plays there at the end on third down and, and their defense obviously disrupting us on offense. Um, obviously, I'm disappointed in our ability to run the football down inside the, the goal line area. Um, any team that I coach, we, we're going to be a team that has the ability, that has to have the ability to punch it in. Um, and again, they out executed us, so I've got to give them credit. Um, as I told our team, our journey is not going to be defined by one win or one loss. Um, as we enter into conference play, which gives us a, a second season per se. Uh, and we've got a bye week, which will give us some time to get some guys healthy, but also some time to go back and look at this tape and get some of the things corrected that really showed up on tape. And I mean, there's some things that hadn't showed up in the first two games that, that we'll, we'll get corrected here this week. Our players have a little time off Sunday, Monday, and then uh, we'll get back in here and go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to get a jump, uh, obviously on Penn State. Um, but like I told our team, like, we're building a foundation. And so, uh, you know, you're guaranteed two things in life, and that's opportunities and adversity. And sometimes you don't know which one you're in until you're in it. Obviously, we're facing some adversity now with the loss uh, to a good team. But I think when we watch the tape as a team, we're going to be really disappointed that we didn't play the type of football that we've played the first two weeks. And it's my job as the coach to find out why and make sure we get that corrected. So uh, without any other, I'll open it up for questions. I would refer Jack Litch Law Group to anyone that I know because of their professional touch and they get the job done. They get it done timely and they do it right. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust and we have with great results and great service. So call the big dogs right now, don't wait. Find us online at bigdogssmallfirm.com. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Uh, without obviously being able to look at the tape, how would you assess uh, Josh's decision making and how much was that affected by the pressure? You know, I hate being, having to answer questions like this without seeing it, um, but looking at it from the sideline where I have views, some of the decision making that uh, he made great decisions in the first two games. I think there was some uh, there was some hesitancy by him, and I think some of the things he predetermined. Um, Temple did a great job trying to disguise their safeties and their looks, but ultimately, you know, we've got to have really good eye discipline at the quarterback position and put your eyes on the things you need to see to make the right decision. And uh, I don't think any of us played very well today. Again, this is a team loss, and again. Uh, whether he made great choices or not, we had two opportunities down inside the one yard line and tried to run the ball and put the ball in our best player's hands and we got stuffed. And that to me is what sits in my craw a little bit because we need to be able to be physical enough to line up and give the ball to Anthony McFarland and get a yard. Uh, how much of the struggles uh, at the end of the game inside, uh, you know, inside the 10 uh, predicated on the fact that Terrence wasn't in there? You know, we're not going to make excuses for it because we've been rotating guys in there. Austin Fontaine has played some football for us. Ellis McKinney becomes like a, another starter. Um, would we like to have Terrence Davis out there? No doubt about it. Uh, but ultimately, when we give the ball to number five and, and we have it down inside the one yard line, we've got to have enough wherewithal to be able to cover people up, run off the football, make sure we don't allow penetration, and let Ant do what he does. And he, he usually is a strong inside runner. Um, he got hit in the backfield two times, and that's disappointing. But we got to watch the tape, find out why, and we're going to correct it here this week. In the back to your left, Andy. Uh, do you know the extent of Terrence Davis's injury? I don't. I think initially it's something knee related, whether it's MCL, ACL, we won't know until we obviously go take a look at it. Sean. Uh, before the last fourth and goal, there's like two minutes left in the box. You guys wasted your last time out. If you didn't use that, you could have maybe 40 seconds left at the end of the game to try to do something. Do you guys think that's the last play you guys had on that fourth and goal for two minutes left? The fourth and goal, we used the timeout? Yeah. With us? Uh, well, we wanted to get a good play. It was fourth and ball at the seven yard line, and I wanted to make sure we got the best play we could get called. 
which we came back and then uh, we went to DJ and he just was out of bounds. And, uh, again, T uh, Temple out uh, executed us on that play. But we wanted to make sure, knowing that that would be our last play possibly, uh, that we wanted to try to get the ball in the end zone. So we took the time out to make sure we called the best play we thought we could call at that time. Patrick, you mentioned penalties the last couple of weeks today and probably came back to pitch a little bit more. Is that on top of the stuff in the down by the goal line? Discipline precedes winning, and I, I, I'll, I'm going to back off of that. And, I mean, that's not just players. We had a coach get a penalty on third down because he's in the white and allow them to sustain the drive. So, I mean, that's everybody. And we, you know, we got to be in the chippy team and talking. And we're not going to be a team that talks to the officials or talks to the other team. And, you know, I'll get that corrected. That's on me as the head coach to make sure that we won't be a disciplined team. But discipline precedes winning. And, uh, you know, today we, we, we had a bunch of penalties. We weren't very good on third down on offense. We weren't very good down in the red zone. You know, obviously, you know, we lost our kicker after the first field goal. Petrino, you know, took Curtis groin and couldn't kick. And uh, it was just, like I said, an all-around team effort in terms of the loss. And, you know, we'll watch it and figure out why and get the, get it corrected and then get ready for our uh, conference season. Petrino longer, probably longer term. You don't know yet. I mean, it was a groin that basically said after the first field goal that he missed and he couldn't kick anymore. So. Um, that, that obviously created us to have to make some decisions with what we do in the kicking game. Nice. And, you know, with that, you know, field goal, they can kind of walk me through your decision on that and what kind of happened with execution? Well, two things, you know, watching them on tape, we have one game. Um, Petrino misses his first field goal. We know he's not able to kick it. We're in that gray area of where we were on the field. And uh, with Enzarello being the backup, they brought field block on tape. You know, we had to watch a lot of last year stuff, and then the first kick that we missed, they brought the field block, but this time they didn't bring the field block, and they brought the edge pressure from the boundary, and we tried to execute a fake expecting field pressure, knowing that our kicker you know, couldn't kick the ball, and it was a great call, obviously. Coach, uh, you've recently brought up a few times the lapses in communication on the back end. So today it wasn't a lapse of communication. I mean, if you look at the touchdown, Ant was in great position. Tuan was in great position. He played the ball with the wrong arm instead of when you're in a man position, you usually play for breakups. He turned to look for the ball at the end, played with his inside arm, so he didn't even make the play and missed the tackle. So that's a technical thing, really what communication. Today, I didn't see anybody running free like we saw earlier in a couple of the games earlier, but we just, again, we struggled playing a deep ball today. I think Tino had two or three pass interference calls where he's in great position and we've got to, again, just relax, play the ball, become a, a receiver and not panic. And uh, those are the things that we've got to try to get corrected here this week because we're in a good position playing man coverage. but. We're not playing the ball or we have bad eyes and those are the things we'll get corrected. But we didn't have much communication errors today. Tom? Um, does the bye week come at a good time in terms of being able to get two weeks of practice? I, I like it because it gives us a chance to kind of, you know, you usually want to get about four weeks and then give your team a break. And we've been going really hard since August 3rd, I think, when we reported the camp. And this is really the first opportunity that they'll have some a couple of days off. Uh, the school going and we're right in the, 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 the heat of it with school and so I think it does come at a good time. Obviously we'd like to have won the game and played better than what we played today but for the way we played, yeah, the bye couldn't have come at a better time because it'll give us a chance to maybe go back to the basics and make sure that we get the fundamental things cleaned up and, uh, and make sure that our players are able to execute at a high level, which we did the first two games. Take two more. Coach, there was a lot of pressure on Josh Jackson throughout the game. Is you mentioned that Howard tried that, Syracuse tried it. What did you do to countermeasure that? Is that what you expected when you came in here? Well, I mean, really, they, they weren't necessarily a big pressure team, and it really wasn't. But what happens when you get behind the sticks on first and second down, and you allow yourself to get in the third and long situations, that's where you get pressure. Um, and that's when everybody knows you're throwing the ball so they can pin their ears back and, and rush the passer like they did today. So my answer to it would be we've got to play better on first and second down where, you know, they instead of what we saw on film most of the week where the safety was the extra conflict player, they switched to look up now the corner became a trap player 
and Josh has got to see it, the receiver's got to see it, and we have answers to it, but I think we got back to it too late, and I think, again, we started predetermining decisions, and in the RPO stuff, those things got to be made post-snap, and you got to be really, really disciplined. I mean, it's no different than the triple option where, I mean, they can't be right, and the only way they can be right is if they out-execute us, and I didn't think we executed very well on offense. I mean, that's across the board, and we want to keep saying Josh as well, but I still go back to two opportunities to put it in the end zone on fourth down, and we're getting the big people, and we've got some big, strong guys early in the game and late where we couldn't get a yard, and that, that's disappointing to me, and, and we'll put that on, we'll watch it on tape and figure out what we got to do to get better there. That's one time. Um, on, on their last touchdown drive, do you think it, it was sort of a, you know, they had been on the field a lot during the game because of a lot of three and outs. Do you think they, had, had, you know, they finally had to play fairly well for most of the day, just got fired? Well, we played 85 plays, and I think they played 76 plays. So it was a, a game where we got all, both sides of the ball got a lot of plays in. But again, we couldn't get off the field on third down. I mean, I think that drive, they had three maybe pass interferences on third down, which gave them first down opportunity. So, I mean, sometimes on defense, getting off the field requires you to execute and get off the field. And he did a tremendous job in the first half, and that's what I told our team. I mean, offensively was where we sputtered and couldn't, couldn't execute. And it was disappointing because, you know, seeing it from on the field, where the ball should go and it not going to the area that I thought it should go to. And you know, we had to get the quarterback settled down a little bit, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think defense was his own worst enemy in the second half. And again, you know, we got to get off the field on third down and then on offense. And we just did not sustain drives. We were kind of big little. We did big plays or we had some negative plays, which we hadn't done the first two games. Thank you, Coach. Thanks.